Thank you, Acting Speaker. I rise to speak on the Statute Law Amendment Bill 2022. A bill which, while not the most high profile uh, in terms of media and publicity, certainly is, however, despite what those op opposite attempted to do earlier with this attempt to suspend standing orders, is a bill that certainly is critically important in terms of public policy substance and outcomes in many ways, particularly around the safety of women and children, which I'll turn to in the substance of my contribution. As I said in my first speech, I am committed to building a better and fairer Victoria. And underpinning this aspiration is to ensure that we always strive for a better and fairer legislation that accurately reflects and responds to the needs of the community. When legislation is drafted, it is done with the utmost of care and of the highest of possible standards. However, despite the best endeavours of all involved, occasionally minor errors and omissions arise as new legislation commences or as further reforms are implemented, which, as identified, need to be ironed out and updated accordingly. The bill, therefore, is required as a matter of good legis legislative practice and housekeeping to ensure that the clarity, relevance and accuracy of statute law in Victoria is maintained. The bill seeks to rectify a collection of minor errors contained within a number of acts through an omnibus type bill to ensure Victoria's legislation across respective policy areas continues to remain robust and fit for purpose as we strive and, and work to respond to community needs um, through the work of this chamber. The bill seeks to update, modernise and correct minor amb ambiguities across a number of acts, including the Aboriginal Heritage Act, the Domestic Animals Act, the Housing Act, the Terrorism Community Protection Act, the Competition and Policy Reform Act and the Justice Legislation Amendment. However, it's one of the amendments contained in this bill that I would like to focus my contribution on and which I believe is of particular importance in helping to keep our community safe, particularly women and children, which relates to the amendments being made to the Sex Offenders Registration Act 2004. The bill amends and updates the Sex Offenders Registration Act 2004, an act which supports Victoria Police to actively monitor uh, sex offenders to reduce the risk of reoffending. It requires offenders to report to Victoria Police at the commencement of their registration period and to periodically, over that time, allow Victoria Police to record the personal details of an offender. These amendments complement a wider, multi-level tapestry of state and federal legislation, all aimed at cracking down on sexual offences and on child sexual exploitation. The focus of state and federal government legislation and policing practices in response to these issues has increasingly sought to align with the realities and evolving risks emerging from advances in communication and technology. One first key step in this regard was in 2019 when the Commonwealth amended the term child pornography material to child abuse material to more accurately, accurately reflect the harm and seriousness of such material and that it does in fact depict the abuse of a child rather than the sexualisation of that abuse. The Andrews Labor government is committed to preventing and reducing sexual offending in all its forms and in also improving the experiences of victim survivors through the justice system. However, despite growing efforts at a federal and state level, sexual harm remains a significant issue faced by too many Victorians, particularly women. According to the ABS, 2.2 million women, that's 23% of women aged 18 years and over, have experienced some form of sexual violence in their lifetime, including childhood sexual abuse or sexual assault since the age of 15. In this regard, I draw the House's attention to the Victorian Law Reform Commission's review into Victoria's laws relating to rape, sexual assault and associated adult and child sexual offences, which were tabled in Parliament in November 2021. The Victorian Law Reform's report, Improving the Response of the Justice System to Sexual Offences, highlighted the need for ongoing and wide-ranging reforms, including improving police and justice system response to victim survivors of offendings. Following the report, the Victorian Labor government progressed some landmark reforms that would overhaul the way sexual offences are reported and dealt with in Victoria. As announced in August 2022, the Victorian Labor government passed historic laws through this parliament through the Justice Legislation Amendment Sexual Offences and Other Matters Bill 2022, which would see Victoria adopt an affirmative consent model, a model that will make it clear to, that everyone has a responsibility to get consent before engaging in sexual activity. For their belief in consent to be reasonable, a person must have taken active steps by saying or doing something to find out if the other person consents. Simply, it must be a clear and enthusiastic go-ahead. The reforms also, also clarified the circumstances where there is, no, there is no consent to an act, including the removal, non-use or tampering of a condom, commonly referred to as stealthing, without the other person's consent, is a crime. The reforms also included stronger laws to target image-based sexual abuse, which includes taking intimate videos of someone without their consent and distributing or threatening to distribute the, these images, including deep fake porn. The reforms also include new jury directions to address misconceptions in sexual offence trials and reforms to better protect the confidential health information of sexual offence complainants. 
Speaker, combined with the reforms contained in this statute law amendment bill, the Victorian Government will continue to ensure we are doing uh, what we can to keep the community safe, particularly women, by preventing and deterring sexual offending from taking place, whilst also strengthening legislation around the active monitoring of convicted offenders by Victoria Police. Speaker, all women should have the fundamental right to feel safe living in their own homes and walking the streets of local communities, regardless of the hour of the day. However, sadly, even today, despite the progress we have made as a community in raising awareness about violence against women, the truth is we still have so much more to do, not only in terms of uh, legal reforms, but through community awareness, particularly by men who need to increasingly be the ones to step up and speak up to prevent and reduce men's violence against women and children. As a male member of parliament, but also as a husband and a father of two daughters, acting speaker, I will be making a concerted effort through every opportunity I have, both in public and private, to raise awareness about these issues as I strive to help build a better, fairer and safer community for all. My electorate and Melbourne's North, like many other parts of the state, has sadly experienced some extremely tragic events with respect to men's violence against women. Speaker, September 2022 marked the 10-year anniversary since Jill Ma was brutally raped and murdered on Hope Street in Brunswick by the most evilest of men. And to her family and former ABC colleague, colleagues, I say we, still, we stand with you and we will never forget. I vividly recall these events of 2012, which occurred almost a month out from when Anna, my wife and I were due to marry. We were still local residents back then. I recall the pain, the anger and the mourning felt by our community at that time as we joined literally thousands who marched down Sydney Road to stand in love with Jill Ma and her family and to stand against everything the evil male perpetrator stood for and did. Despite the progress we have made in raising awareness since then, the sad truth is that women's safety today continues to be compromised by and large by men with misogyny in their hearts and in their minds. In this respect, I would like to draw the House's attention to another distressing event which has sadly occurred in December 2019 along the banks of the Mary Creek in Coburg, a matter which is now being heard by the courts this week. The attack was described in the media as appalling, degrading, terrifying, as the female victim was simply jogging during the late afternoon and evening along the Mary Creek when she was allegedly attacked from behind by the male perpetrator and sexually assaulted. It what went on to become a prolonged assault and described in the media as horrifying. Speaker, I'm sure that I speak for all of us in this chamber in saying that our thoughts and support stand with the female survivor who has reportedly experienced anxiety, depression and PTSD since this incident. Speaker, while this bill cannot sadly change what happened to this courageous local female survivor back in December 2019, it certainly can help form part of the legislative architecture we need to continue building as a parliament as we strive to prevent such incidents in future and to build safer communities for all women. However, along with these reforms around strengthening the Sexual Offenders Register, it is also the ongoing advancements through online and internet-based communications technology which requires us as a state to remain ever vigilant in deterring and preventing online sexual crimes, particularly to protect underage young people and children. Sadly, as we know, while the internet has continued to evolve, it has increasingly created another environment and platform for sexual predators and the exploitation of young people, whether through pedophiles connecting with and grooming innocent young victims, or whether through young people ascertaining and distributing or threatening to distribute um, images and material amongst their own age brackets, which have also got on to have devastating consequences. That is why I welcome the measures contained in this statute amendment bill, which seek to establish a new class two offence under schedule two of the Sex Offenders Register Act 2004, to include preparatory offences such as grooming for sexual conduct, loitering near a school by a sexual offender, and preparing for or planning an offence against the Criminal Code Act. Um, Speaker, it is the position of the Ministerial Council for Police and Emergency Management and Council of Attorney Generals that states and territories should expand registration and supervision schemes to apply to Commonwealth child sex offenders as soon as practicable. This, uh, this amendment, um, Deputy Speaker, does precisely that. Speaker, reports of online child exploitation to the Australian Federal Police have more than doubled since the AFP-led Australian Centre for Counter Child Exploitation was launched in 2018. According to the AFP, uh, after four years of operation, um, there are, have been sadly increasing levels uh, of reporting in this regard. And since its inception in 2018, the ACCCE has been instrumental in the AFP's fight to combat exploitation of children and contributes to significant outcomes, including removing 517 children from harm, identifying 429 victims, receiving nearly 100,000 reports that have resulted in more than 2,000 referrals to law enforcement, and developing key relationships with stakeholders. 
Um, speaker, I'm absolutely committed um, and commend this bill to the, to the House. It is all about women and children's safety in many respects, something that I'll always stand up and fight for in this chamber and outside this chamber. Thank you.